little walk, small talk, big thoughts Gonna tell them all just what I want That street, two streets, I see you and me Hanging on the empty swings Count high, low, don't worry, my eyes are closed I'm the Superman and it's my show One shoe, two, gonna kick with my new shoes I'm gonna kick it What's up guys, welcome to my EOC Bandos guide. Feel free to press the main menu button to go back to the main menu. Okay, to get into God Wars Dungeon, you need Troll Stronghold Quest done, and 60 Strength or 60 Agility to get past the boulder. 60 Agility is about, like, is faster. I don't know how much faster, but it's been proven to be faster. So, if you have the Agility level, always go for the Agility. To get into the Bandos Throne Room, you need 70 Strength and a Hammer. And General Grador has a combat level of 210, life points equal to 55,000. His combat style is melee and range, and his max hit is 1,500. My recommended stats would be 90 plus melee stats, 70 plus prayer for Pidey, 52 plus summoning for a terror bird, and then the highest stats that you want are 95 plus prayer for turmoil, 96 plus herblore for overloads, and 96 plus summoning for pack yak. You're gonna want the best gravestone you can. With the completion of the giant dwarf quest, you can get the angel of death, which lasts 12 minutes. And with the completion of the king of dwarf qu dwarves quest, um, you get the royal dwarven grave, which will last you 15 minutes. And with the new kill count and how hard monsters are, you're not going to get back to your grave even with the Royal Dwarf. I mean, you can, but it's just not really likely. But it's still best to get the, the best grave you can because it just might save you. This is the drop method with the Trollheim teleport. You're going to drop two pieces of food and pick it back up and then you're gonna end up getting a full inventory instead of wasting those two spots where the runes were. So drop two of your food and then teleport back to Edgeville via the lodestone system. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna run back to the bank, withdraw more of your food or whatever resources that you wanna bring extra. and then use the last remaining Trollheim teleport to get back there and you'll have two free slots and that's where your two food go. Getting to God Wars dungeon is very simple. You can either walk there, teleport there with Trollheim teleport or teleport there with the Trollheim teletab which you get from the love story quest. If you have to walk there, I wouldn't really want to go to God Wars dungeon. I'd rather teleport there and it saves on food if you're a lower level. But this is how I get there. Whenever I teleport with my Trollheim Tully tab, I always repair it back to a house tab. So if I die, I die in my house. And then I go over to the obelisk and I recharge my summoning. And then I make my way down the mountain. And if you're a lower level, pray range here because they'll, they'll throw rocks at you. They don't throw rocks at me because I'm double their level. And I always squeeze past the boulder if you have the level. It's much faster. And ignore the wolves. If you are if you want, you can pray melee, but it's really not that worth it. And a rope is required if this is your first time coming to the God Wars. And then after you put the rope down, you'll never have to bring it again. And the, the way it works in here is that if you have the item of the God, the followers won't attack you so you're always going to want a Zamorak item and a Bandos item and you can go here and kill goblins or hobgoblins or do whatever you want for KC and there's the Bandos throne room. KC is pretty simple all you need is 40 kills of a boss's followers and then you can enter the boss's room this applies to all the bosses and uh, now I'm going to show you where to get KC. Um, in the old live RuneScape game, it was easy to get KC on goblins and hobgoblins and maybe ogres and jogers, but now I'd, it's really not that great. If you're doing the magic, if you're, if you're getting KC with magic right now, use earth spells on goblins and hobgoblins or whatever is weak to magic, but since melee isn't that great against them anymore, 
you're gonna want to fight spiritual rangers and spiritual rangers are through the bandos door and once you're through the door you're gonna walk down here I think this is the best place because there's a nice spawn of them and you're gonna attack them and you're gonna it hits pretty well because they're weak to slash and that's what you use with a Darox axe if you're using a different type of melee weapon just try and find something in the God Wars dungeon that's a bandos follower that's weak to your weapon because it will make it significantly faster like fast enough that you can probably get back to your grave if you die because I did KC in 11 minutes with their ox and don't forget to use your abilities and but if you don't want to like just spam abilities getting KC all the time you, uh, momentum works pretty well that's a nice alternative as an extra feature you can go to the Uglog pools they are located right by mobilizing armies to the east and to access them you have to do as a first resort quest and um, you're, what you're going to do is you're just going to jump in the pools and it gives you special effects like the bandos pool makes you safe from bandos followers, sulfur pool boosts prayer by 10%, saltwater spring uh, gives you unlimited run and the thermal bath gives you a health boost and literally all you do is just jump in the pool and jump out and just keep repeating climb over the rocks and you're going to want to go in all the pools available in the town besides the mud baths I'm not sure why but you just don't go in there because it either lowers your stat or does nothing at all this is the two handed weapon ability bar if you're using like a chaotic maul is really good and using Darox or any two handed weapon this is what I would recommend using and my keybinds are set up for like uh, this is just how I like it I feel comfortable using like that I don't have to click the abilities I can use them pretty easily by by like key binding them and uh, if it works out for you too that's great but for A I have slice for S I have smash for D I have cleave for F I have fury for G I have sever for T I have assault which is the best threshold ability in my opinion and then hurricane and pulverize and then W for anticipation I use that like after I use slice I hit up anticipation and then regeneration and then I uh, prayer and summoning or if you had dreadnips I put dreadnips instead of summoning and for the last three I just click with my mouse and I will get into detail about when I use these and how the first thing I use is slice and then I use anticipation and then I go back to slice, you smash, cleave, fury, sever, and then by that time I'll have all like enough to use my threshold abilities. And then I hit him up with assault and a hurricane. And then I repeat with A, S, D, and then I just use whatever I feel like using. And I always go back to the assault and then if I can a hurricane. And you can also substitute out substitute pulverize if you're not using your ultimate abilities that much as for the magic abilities I use rack chain impact combust asphyxiate wild magic tsunami anticipation and regeneration I usually have anticipation as W and regeneration as V but it just got mixed up for some reason and then I have summoning prayer and dreadnips or if you don't have dreadnips you can substitute that for another ultimate this will be the order that I use the abilities and when I use them and this is how I do it I use rack uh, chain impact combust and then I use anticipation and then by that time you should have enough to do asphyxiate but if you don't you uh, use rack again and then use asphy asphyx asphyxiate and uh, that, that, that ultimate just wrecks I mean, sorry, threshold just wrecks. And then I use wild magic, and if it if I come to it where I have full and I don't really need to use regeneration, then I'll use tsunami because I like tsunami. I think it just looks cool. You can you can put metamorphosis if you want, and that's pretty much sums it up. Now we have the dual wield ability bar. For A, we have slice. 
For S, we have Havoc. For D, we have Sever. For F, Fury. G, Assault. T, Destroy. R, Fury. Flurry. V, Frenzy. W, Anticipation. Zero, Regeneration. Then Prayer and Summoning. Or if you have Dreadnips, I would replace Summoning with the Dreadnips. And this is how I would use it. I would use Slice, Havoc. Go back to Slice, Sever, go back to Slice. Keep doing that until you get through all your basic abilities. And then go to your your um, Threshold abilities and use Anticipation while you're doing that. And then like by doing that you should have enough Adrenaline to do all your all your Threshold abilities. And then you can just knock that, those out. And then if you build your bar up, back up and you don't really need to heal at the end of the kill, then I would use Frenzy. And that's pretty much it for this bar. For high level melee armor, I have Darox. It used to be Torva, but Jagex definitely ruined Torva in the e EOC. And now Darox can now hit it. I don't know if this will get patched in the future, but for the time being, Darox is better. If it if this changes, I'll put something in, but for the meantime, just use Darox. And high level equipment like the Kiln Cape, Serdoman's Whisper, Steadfast Boots, Onyx Ring Eye, and Goliath Gloves are recommended. And the best Aurora at this time is Penance. Pretty much you just smack on Penance and then you will not run out of prayer. And what you're going to do is that you have a lot of range defense and you're just going to play pray melee, which works like a charm. And now for the inventory, prayer renewals, overloads, or extremes, yak scrolls, uh, four yak pouches, titan scrolls with two titan pouches, and six prayer potions. And the dual wield CLSs are good for KC, and the chaotic kite shield is good for the ability to rejuvenate. And it requires a shield and a ring of wealth if you are soloing teletab out and some dread nips if you have it and that's the high level inventory this is the medium level armor version of the darox you just have the basic darox but with the fire cape amulet of fury um dragon boots takozo goliath gloves you can substitute that for barrow's gloves you can substitute the ring for uh warrior's ring berserker ring whatever berserker ring eye um, Penance Aurora again or Vampirism and that's pretty much it. A nice alternative for medium level armor would be Bandos with dual wield CLS's, a Fury, Fire Cape or a Kiln Cape, uh, Berserker Ring or Onyx Ring or Takozo, Barrow's Gloves or Goliath Gloves, um, Dragon Boots or Steadfasts and a Bandos Helmet and don't forget the Zamorak Arrows by the way. And this is just a good alternative if you don't want to do Darox or you already have Bandos and you just don't want to abandon it. This set won't be as effective as the Darox set would be, but it's definitely still good. And I would recommend using dual CLSs too because it is very good. And this is that's it for this armor setup. And for the inventory, we have four prayer renewals, two sets of extremes or supers, two prayer potions. Um, bring more prayer potions if you're not if you're not using the penance aurora because you will run out of prayer pots faster then you will run out of food then bring rock tails or sharks or if you have something better uh, bring that dreadnips is optional and two extra bob pouches and a teleport out and a familiars that you would want from best to worst is a yak a titan a unicorn a tort or a terror bird obviously if you can have a, a BOB and a Titan or Unicorn, you'd want to bring that too. And a Fruit Bat. For the low level armor, you just have basic Barrow's equipment. Varox plate secured is good with Torx plate body and a Solar's cape or a Fire cape for the cape slot. Penance Aurora or Vampirism Aurora. Uh, Helm of Nezi or a Torx helmet. Uh, Dragon Fire Shield uh, with a Whip or a Chaotic Rapier. And then Barrow's Gloves, Taco Zo or Berserker or Warrior's Ring, Dragon Boots. And that should be it for the low level. The low level inventory is pretty basic. It's just three prayer renewals, uh, super set, three to six prayer pots or three to six restores. I like taking three restores and three prayer pots. The restores are so I can recharge my summoning so I can 
get my next B.O.B. familiar out when it's about to die. And then I have a Bando Scott Sword as a Bandos item. You can switch that out with Bandos Boots. And um, that's pretty much it. Besides, dread you can still have Dreadnips at this level, I guess. It's optional. And a Teleport Out is needed. For the Magic Armor, I didn't separate them into high, medium, and low level. I just put them all together. And for the medium, I would use full Gano with the boots and all. I have a Staff of Light, a Takul Zoe, a God Cloak from the Wilderness minigame, Amulet of Fury, you can substitute that out with like a uh, Ceridoman Amulet. And for a upgrade, I would put, uh, I would switch out Gano for Virtus. And I would switch out the Staff of Light for like an Aram's Wand, a Grafalic Wand, a uh, Virtus Wand, and then I would switch out my shield slot with a Virtus book or Aram's book or something along those lines and for a downgrade list I would put I would take off my Gano helmet and put on a Fremnic magic helmet with infinity or or mystic robe set and for the for the boots and gloves I might leave them the same or just uh, you could switch them out for something lower and for a wand you could use like a batwing wand and a batwing book or shield um, it's entirely up to you for the magic sediment setup it's much like the low level setup bring air runes and earth runes three prayer renewals overloads extreme magic or magic potions three to six prayer pots or three to six super stores rock tails or sharks or dreadnips if you have them and two extra bob pouches whichever bob that you, you have and um, like I said, the superstore is pretty much only to boost up your summoning so you can summon those, those uh, terror birds. And that should be all for the magic. Now I'll be showing you how to effectively kill General Grador. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to step in this death dot spot that I'm in. And what, you, what it does, it like drags the generals up close to you so your area effects can kill them and you can kill about like two two of the little generals before you kill general grador so you can get a lot of drops in one kill and before you go into the room you're going to want to pot up and then set your quick prayers to protect from melee protect item and like whatever stat boosting prayer that you're using or if you're using curses protect from melee curse soul split and if you want you can use turmoil but soul split is enough in the north part of the room there's an altar which you can use to recharge your prayer every 10 minutes and you can also use it to tele teleport out but uh if you don't have 40 kc when you tele out you're gonna have to kill some more bandas followers to get back in and this altar is good for when you get crashed and you don't want to tele out you still have some supplies left and uh, the catch about it is that if general grad or spawned you cannot use the altar so you can't use it as a method to escape and if you get if you happen to get crashed just go to the northwest corner and log out and you'll be pretty safe to log in after each kill you're going to want to use regeneration or rejuvenation if you have a shield it's re rejuvenation but if you don't have a shield use regeneration regeneration is still good but rejuvenation heals 40 percent of your life points which is very very good so um you should bring a shield all right for the kill i go a s a D A F A. I always go back to Slice because Slice is ready after you use each ability. And then once you get to um, your last basic ability and then use Slice again, I then you'll have enough to do Assault and Hurricane. And also don't forget to use your defensive abilities because they'll keep your life points high. And what if you're? I'd like to keep my life points above. 1000 while I'm fighting it because you don't know when you're gonna get KO'd anything lowers you're in the KO factor But now Bandos doesn't hit that much. So yeah, it's pretty safe and After the kill I like to keep my life points at about 4k to 5k LP and that usually lasts me a pretty good while So now I'll just speed up the clip 